Well, good morning. And look at this beautiful morning up here in Northern Alberta. What a, what a shift from some of the springs and things we've had before. Of course, there's that uh, elephant in the room that it's too dry and it's, n it's none too wet, I can tell you that. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're realistically two weeks out from real aggressive seeding. Uh, I have heard folks are already seeding, but I, I don't, to, that, that doesn't make sense to me. That's not what we're going to do. So <clears throat> what we are going to do and what we've been doing over the last couple days is washing tractors, getting the drill out. We've got to get it hooked together, get all the hoses hooked up, find out what hydraulic hoses are going to leak this year, find out what bolts are missing, find out what tractors are going to have what problems and uh, calibrate GPSs and things. So it is Saturday and uh, it's, it's like 11.59. I just stopped making bags. I've been making bags all morning. I uh, got the tractor set back up so when dad gets his screening truck <clears throat> to the point where he doesn't want to climb in it and shovel the little pile around, he can bring it down here and unload it. And then uh, I'm going to wash these tractors a little bit more. So I washed most of the pigeon crap off of them yesterday and <clears throat> you just don't do a good job without detergent, right? So I want to get some soap which we picked up yesterday. We had to take the kids into town for hockey. They got a spring hockey camp going on there. Uh, so I dropped them off, ran over, picked up some things at the store there, some detergent, and I bought a big tarp to cover my mom's motorhome. She's not a big fan of having it covered in pigeon crap either. And I don't know the best way to keep the pigeons out of the rafters in that shed. So we elected not to put a door on it because well, the, the, the thieves rip the doors off anyways, or they, you know, they pry them open and everything so they're all wrecked. Um, that's a south-facing door, so we don't have snow really blow in there all that much. Um, and I don't have to open the doors, right? It's just kind of big enough that everything's set back in there. But with no door, birds. So the birds are flying in there. I did hang some ribbons from the rafters up there. That sort of deterred them for like a week, and then they got used to the ribbons and they came back. So I've heard of like sound things and I've heard of predators, like you put a sculpture of an owl or an eagle or something up in there and that scares them off uh, until they get used to that too, of course. But I don't know if anybody there has an idea. I think what we're gonna do is look at getting that mesh netting that you staple to the rafters and then they can't get up in there. Uh, I think that's probably what we're gonna have to do because that stuff is, it's gross and it's a bit, it's actually a bit corrosive. Like it actually eats away at the, at the paint that it's sitting on if it sits there all season. So anyways, that's that. Uh, this drill doesn't need too much. This I believe was a 2016 or a 2018 drill toolbar. So it's only got, it probably doesn't even have 10,000 acres on it. Um, <clears throat> I know I'm missing a few bolts. I don't know if you can see that right there. Uh, where's my finger? Right there. What's going on here? Anyways, the other side of that black Seedmaster emblem, there's a bolt missing there on a few shanks, not just that one. So I got to replace that bolt for sure. And uh, then basically just hook it up, run the hydraulics and see if the hydraulics are going to overheat. So last year when we were seeding, we had like, we were seeding in like plus 35, which is very, very uncommon for us. And originally I had been pulling the drill with this tractor. This is a TJ380. So it's like 380 horsepower. And uh, <clears throat> the first two seasons was no problem. Third season, the hydraulics were getting warm. So we did blow the rads out. I was actually talking to a buddy there the other day, yesterday, last night, something or other, because he had, I don't know how he found out that I was having uh, hydraulic heat issues, but he was like, well, maybe check your rads, which of course is definitely a good place to start. Um, technology in these newer tractors is better than it was before. I know our 8650 tractor, the rads were stacked together and then down in the bottom here, it would always fill up with dirt and chaff. So they were always plugged up. These ones, there's quite a bit of space and it's quite easy to get at to clean them out. So I did wash them out and we did switch over last year to pull the drill with this tractor. Now the hydraulics got, they, they stayed a little bit cooler. So this is a two gallon 
a minute bigger pump. This one's 57 on this tractor. That one's 55. So that shouldn't make the difference. But I think this one has a bigger cooler, certainly a different design cooler. So yet again, yesterday I had peeled this all off and you fold this down. Whoops, what's happening here? Yep, fold it down and there you go. You can get at everything. I didn't do all of this. Somebody else did this, but you can, you can wash this stuff out pretty effectively. So I do not think that it's my... I do not think that it's my uh, rads being plugged. <clears throat> also, we had uh, a weak fill auger last year. So the loading auger for that cart, it just, it wasn't, the first year we got that drill, it was just like, Whoa! it would load, load wheat and everything as fast as you could get it in there. Uh, then I had that shaft seal leak. So I took it up and had them rebuild it. And I don't actually think they did rebuild it. I think they just, forgot about it left it on the shelf and then at the end of the summer when i went to pick it up they're like oh yeah no here it's done and they gave it to me and i brought it back because it leaked right away again so then i took a stab at rebuilding it and it made the season and then it it didn't uh it didn't work anymore after that or it, it leaked again so when i was looking into it they said lots of times when the shaft seal continually leaks, it's because the shaft itself is pitted from the fertilizer going through it. So that made sense to me. So we just bought a new hydraulic motor. I haven't put it on yet. And we also bought a new selecting valve. So there's a, a big hydraulic block to select from auger to fan or to calibrate. And that was actually leaking out the, sh out the seal too. So we replaced that as well. And I'm hoping that's where my heat issue was coming from. It was bypassing in that block or in that motor. And so that should solve my heat issue and it should solve my no power issue. Of course, I won't know any of that until we get it all fired up. <clears throat> also, we had an absolutely hellish wind yesterday and the turkey feathers are just finally starting to thaw out in front of the shop here from where we had our big turkey dispatching day. And, uh, they blew into the shop here. So I had a, a pretty good time trying to fish all the turkey feathers out from everywhere. So we're gonna leave the door shut today, I think. Well, good afternoon. So we were in, had lunch, that was good. I did get these tractors washed up and soaped up. Uh, I don't know, our water leaves quite, quite a bit of white streaks on things if you don't get the soap going. So we even washed Buddy's go-kart. Uh, and then I had to come out and load up a couple of bags and I noticed the steering on the old uh, telehandler was getting quite stiff. Now on closer inspection, I got uh, some fairly shiny gravel here and a little bit of a trail. No, I don't think so. Okay, there's more oil there. So then as we follow the trail, we find out that uh, things were getting progressively worse until we land uh, over here. Uh-oh. Oh boy. Oh. The old starter, I guess, pulled through one more time. So then uh, backed up and found that we had a leaking steering hose. So, mother's off to town to get that. It is Saturday, right? Everything breaks on a, on a Saturday. At least that is the saying on most farms. On our farm, everything breaks every day. So, we're just, this is what it is. Dad is heading back up to start the cleaner again. He was also having lunch. And then we got the crew over here cleaning tractor cabs. Corey and the kids, I'm gonna go over there and see if they need a little bit of help. And then, uh, oh, I do gotta go over and boost my mom's motorhome again. That piece of junk, that's, uh, it's always dead. It's just, I guess there's just too much stuff drawing on it. So, anyways, boost that. You want to get that washed again. I had water tarp. Anyways, so, actually, excuse me, I can't even do that until 
telehandler's fired up because I gotta move those bin packages. So anyways, no point in doing that either. Well, good morning. Buddy and I were in uh, in blue, the tractor here. They did a pretty good job of cleaning it out yesterday. Got the windows washed, cabs cleaned. They did Gus as well. He's back here hooked up to the drill. <clears throat> but we are heading up to get the uh, anhydrous cultivator. Dad is back cleaning barley. And uh, he'll most likely get that finished today. If not today, tomorrow. We'll get the anhydrous hooked up. Got to bring it down, check all the hoses, check the shovels, check the tires, grease it up, hook it up to the tank. And then if we have some time today, we might actually end up out in the field testing it out, make sure it works. Not even 100% sure what time it is but it's uh it is getting on in the day i can tell you that so we've already scuffed up the floor a little bit not too terribly bad they did a pretty good job cleaning in here and i am uh and hydrogen So I got about uh, what, almost 40 acres done here. I'm quite excited about the way this GPS is working out. I finally figured out how to get it to like register as a like a hitched implement and not a mounted like a header on a combine or something. So that's been fun. Like of course we've had this since 2006 and we're just figuring it out now, which is pretty pretty insane. It just goes to show the, um, like the pressure that, I mean, some farms find themselves under. So I know there's lots of guys who will, they'll take the time, they'll get the techs out and they will not, uh, they'll, they'll wait until it all works before they get going. And we, uh, we're not really like that. So if it's working at all, we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out as we go. And that's because most of the time when we've been getting to the field in spring or spraying or or in the fall with combines there's always that hard line right and you're it's it's, it's usually tough or at least for for the majority of what i can remember of my life it's always been tough the springs have been wet so you're driving around wet spots and they're waiting for the snow to disappear and the falls have been late and the snow is coming so all this extra stuff like gps's it never got all the time that it, I guess, deserved or required. And now with the last two or three years, we've had like super long falls. I mean, even the spring, right? It's what, it's the 13th of April today and we're already out anhydrousing. That's just crazy. Normally we're not starting in the field till like the 5th or the 10th of May somewhere, but it's insane. So anyways, that being said, we're given we're giving some things, some extra time. All of these GPSs I did the other day, recalibrated them, like, or re, what do you call that? Default, reset it back to default settings, cleared all the fields and all the information out of there, started right fresh, new numbers, new roll calibrations, and I'm actually quite impressed with the way it's working. Oh, well, good evening. Just like that, we're back in the yard. So, everything was still working, but I ran out of and hydrus so that was okay uh, i did find myself a brand new shiny wrecking bar in the field when i stopped to check uh what was left in the tank it was actually laying right beside the tire so kind of nice that it was found and not found in the tire uh i'm not gonna make a plan for tomorrow let's be honest we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow um i do gotta fill up some of these feed bins pretty quick here and then uh that could be a tomorrow thing. I'm not too sure. <clears throat> also got to get the cart hooked up to the drill and make sure that that all syncs up again. Because if it doesn't, we're going to have to get a tech out here to do that do that jazz. But anyways, it's been a pretty good start to the spring. Pretty good uh, start to the field work, really. So, whew. as always, thanks for watching. And we will see you all on the next one.